Welcome to Raw and Real. I am here with a special guest today. Her name is Artis Keshawn. Did I say that? Oh, Keshawn. <laughs> See, I didn't get that right. Artis Keshawn. And um, yeah, it's an honor to be here. We're going to start. Artis has an amazing testimony. But before we start, I'm going to ask Artis to pray. And then we're going to go into it. Is that okay, Artis? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share about your goodness. And Father, we just ask your hand upon this moment together sharing. And we pray, Lord, that this testimony of your goodness would reach who it needs to reach in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So I had, I got a few questions here I put on the yeah. on a piece of paper for you. And I want to ask you, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I already introduced yourself. Mm -hmm. I, you told us her name, but yeah. give us a background, a brief background of your life before the events of what you're going to testify about today. Yeah. So I grew up um, on the Case Coast First Nation. That's where I'm from. I left home at a young age when I was 17 and have lived here in Saskatoon since. Mm -hmm. And what I'm sharing about is actually going to be about my childhood on the reserve. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, how did you become involved in Christianity? How did you become delivered? How did you, what made you attracted to Jesus? So, um, as I said, growing up on the reserve, um, till I was 17, there was a full gospel church on our reserve. Yeah. And occasionally my dad attended church there. Yeah. So at a very young age, seeds were planted and my dad had actually dedicated me as a child, as a baby to the Lord. So I believe that's where it's all, all started. And then as a teenager, I started seeking something out myself. I wanted a different life. So my sister and I actually started going to the church alone together as teenagers. Mm -hmm. And that's where I had my first encounter with God. Amen. And then I guess we can fast forward. I tried serving God mm -hmm. myself as in my 20s. Yeah. And I was very much a Sunday Christian where um, I didn't really try to have a relationship with God. So yeah. it really showed and how my life wasn't really affected. Mm -hmm. um, and then, fast forward to in my 30s, two years ago, yeah. I came back to the Lord and gave my life back to the Lord and started attending Christ the Healer. Praise God. Praise God. Number three, third question. Mm -hmm. What was your initial rea reaction when you realized that you were part of this significant Christian culture, Jesus culture. You know, I don't think I totally understand it, things fully until I pers actively pursued a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And that was two years ago. Yeah. Even knowing um, who he was, knowing a little bit about the Bible as a child, as a teen, as a young adult, I yeah. didn't fully understand it until I began that relationship with him and began to understand Mm -hmm. um, who God truly was and what my identity was in Christ. Yeah. And once I realized that, that's when I realized that impact. Amen. Amen. Number four, now we're going to talk about exactly what you testified on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So number four is describe to us in detail from your perspective, yeah. everything that you shared about so, Sunday. I had shared how um, I grew up on the reserve in a very um, negative lifestyle. Uh, uh, no, not lifestyle, negative cycle. My family um, struggled with addictions, drugs and alcohol. They struggled. Um, we seen violence. They struggled with suicide. Um, a big part of my testimony was how... Um, Growing up, I had seen my dad battle these things and how I seen God work in his life and change his life. Yeah. So growing up in this cycle, I wish I could say it was only a once in a while thing. 
but that negative cycle of um, my family having good times and bad times yeah. happened multiple times a year from as early as I can remember until I left home and I was 17 years old. And when I shared, um, I shared about how, you know, my dad had issues with anger. He was very quick to anger. Mm. He had issues with suicide where he had attempted suicide multiple times. Yeah. And I remember that at a very young age. Um, one of the really amazing parts of his testimony, and I guess our testimony, is how he was instantly delivered from alcoholism. Mm. When he was an alcoholic, he used to go on binges days mm. at a time. And the one time he came home, or actually he came to our grandmother's place where we were at. My mom was there. My mom was very young, looking after two children, a baby and a toddler at like 19 years old. So he came back and he said that He's seen us crying. He's seen my sister crying as a toddler, probably missed dad. Mm -hmm. And he said it broke his heart. And at that moment, when he was holding my sister, he, um, he decided he didn't want to live like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And he literally said, God, if you are real, I don't ever want to drink again. Mm -hmm. And he never drank again. Wow. Wow. He, didn't go wow. through any withdrawals. He didn't oh, wow. battle that temptation. Mm -hmm. You know, the world tells us that we have to go through treatments. We have to do these different steps. Mm -hmm. But that is not the way God created us. Yeah, That is not who God is. You know, it's a lie when they say that once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. And you're mm -hmm. going to spend your life in recovery. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Come on, sister. Tell my me. dad did not struggle with that. And that happened when I was a baby over 30 years ago that he was instantly delivered. Come on. The same thing happened to my grandfather. His dad was delivered from alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And I remember visiting my grandpa one time and asking him about it. And same thing. He was um, at home and his brother, who was saved already, yeah. a believer, came yeah. to see him and to, um, pray for him. Mm -hmm. And the older people, they sometimes have different languages, language for things. So when you, they refer to a sweater, he called it yeah. a pullover. Yeah, yeah. So he said in that two to three minute prayer, he said, it's like I took a pullover off and he made that motion. Mm. And he said, it came off of me just like that. And mm -hmm. he said, I never drank again. Wow. And they Ooh, prayed against that. That's the power of God. Yes. Wow. You know, and we listen to the world mm -hmm. saying we have to do so many things to achieve that sobriety and yeah. to be free mm -hmm. when really all we need is Jesus. That's right. So um, the next part, I guess, so that my dad was delivered from alcoholism. And I'm so grateful for that as a child, but he still battled drug addiction um, this uh, with suicide. Yeah. So throughout our lives growing up, my sister and I seen these things. Mm -hmm. And then as teenagers, we started seeking out help ourselves yeah, and so. we would go to the church. So I remember many times going up at altar call asking the Lord, you know, to fix my parents. Mm. Um, I don't ever remember even asking for something for myself. Yeah. I was always, excuse me, my parents. Yeah. And so as I was going to church, I began to learn things about God um, where it could, you know, stick with me that I learned to pray in the name of Jesus. I learned a little bit about the Bible enough to give me a foundation that, you know what, even when I was backslidden, I was still seeking out God. Yeah. Or help and rescue at times. Yeah. Wow. And then I left home because of that cycle I lived in with my family. I often 
was just unsure all the time of, you know, when are things going to fall apart and get bad? Mm. I was always scared. Mm. But in the good times, the good times were good. You know, my dad was working. He'd have money. The family would be happy. But then, you know, life fall, would fall apart again. And there was fighting. And um, I seen my dad go through those periods of feeling hopeless about life. And um, I, a time or two, had to talk him out of suicide. So living through that, I remember at times feeling like, you know, one of these days I leave home, I'm going to cut my family out of my life. I'm just going to cut them off. I'm tired of living this way. But the Lord didn't let me do that. Like he had other plans for us. Hmm. So in my 20s, as I said, I tried serving the Lord again, but it wasn't very good because I wasn't. Um, actively pursuing a relationship with God and only seeking him out on Sundays and Wednesdays. Yeah. So that affected it. And I went through some significant losses one year that caused me to backslide and I left church and mm. was gone for a lot of years. Mm. But in that time, my dad ended up going back to church he got saved yeah. and over a period of time I began to see changes in my dad that I never thought I'd see yeah he was free from drug addiction come on he was free from that spirit of suicide come on I never had to worry about losing my dad yeah he was just being blessed in so many ways. Like I could see that change. He went from being an angry person to just full of joy to this day. You know, he's, if something happens where naturally a, uh, any person would get angry and upset, yeah. I see him just trusting in God and having joy and peace through these moments. Yeah. And it's it was it's been such a blessing to see because on top of that, the Lord blessed our relationship. I have a really strong relationship with my dad. Um, growing up in the good times, you know, my dad, both of my parents really tried their best, yeah. but they were up against so much. They were up against so much that, you know, to this day I've forgiven them and I don't hold that against them. Um because I seen the attacks they were under spiritually. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm really blessed that I have this amazing relationship with my dad. And, you know, in those good times growing up, my dad was still, he tried his best and was a really good dad. Mm -hmm. He instilled a lot of good things in me growing up. Yeah. Um, he taught me to work hard, taught me to be honest. Mm -hmm. He would take us to church occasionally, and he even taught us um, Bible verses as children, and he made us memorize those. Yeah. And those were so valuable to have throughout my life that I would remember and recall these verses and pray in times that I really needed them. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there's so many people that are living in cycles like this, so many children especially, living in homes like this that, you know, don't have the hope that I did yeah. because I knew Jesus. Yeah. Um, and that I think was a big reason why I shared the testimony that day of church is I know that there's someone who needs the hope that's right. of Jesus. That's right. Yeah, that's, that was a big part of the testimony is sharing, you know, what I experienced because there's so many people in this province experiencing that same thing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, you kind of covered a lot there, <laughs> which was really good. Um, cause that means I don't have to go through, uh, um, all the questions, but I'll try. I'll only ask the important ones. If they're not interesting, I'll probably skip over. Yeah. Um, you did not leave any detail out, which is amazing, which is awesome. Um, uh, then this is why we're here. This is raw and real. So question number five is, what was the most striking moments for you during your life testimony? 
So it was always knowing that testimony of my dad being instantly delivered from alcoholism. Like that. He shared that a lot. Mm. Um, then it was the next most important, I think, was my encounter with God. Oh. When I was at a tent meeting at a nearby reserve, um, a couple of us, uh, my sister and my cousin, drove to a neighboring reserve to a tent meeting. And there I had an encounter with God where I felt his power. And from then on, I was like, Lord, I will never deny that you're real. I know that you are truly real. Mm. Um, and then next was, you know, I learned a lot throughout the years, even the years in my 20s where I wasn't, you know, I had one foot in the world still. Yeah. But I was learning a lot from my pastors then until now. The most impactful, I think, was having my own relationship with God. Mm -hmm. When I came back to church in 2022, I told the Lord, I said, if we're doing this again, it has to be different. Mm -hmm. No longer do I want to look at what other people have with you and what other people are experiencing. I said, I want it myself mm -hmm. i want to have a relationship i want to have my own faith i want to be able to say my own prayers mm -hmm. you know not rely on asking someone else for prayer so when i said that he led me to matthew six thirty three to seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so anytime for that first year that I had questions, he led me to that first. Mm -hmm. to, so I just Fire. knew to keep seeking mm -hmm. after God and to press into the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So I know you're going to say your dad for this question because this question mm -hmm. says, were there any significant individuals who stood out to you during this time? Mm-hmm. It definitely was my dad, mm -hmm. because that was a huge difference from the man I knew then yeah. to the man of God I know now, mm -hmm. who is, we have such a close relationship, and all the glory is to God for the changes he's made, and my dad will say so himself. Amen. That it wasn't, you know, he didn't do that on his own strength. He spent years trying to do it on its own strength, and it didn't get him anywhere. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until he had a relationship with God. And also, my sister. She and I are close in age, and we grew up in that together. Yeah. She was there with me. We went to church together. So it was nice having someone to go through different things with, and she always looked out for me when my parents couldn't be parents. Mm -hmm. She was like a mom to me, even yeah. though she was just one year older. She was very motherly to me and looked out for me. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Have they come here before? Have I met your family? Yes, they've been here. Yeah. I believe you've met my sister, yeah. maybe my dad. Um, so the three of us are all serving God. Yeah. And still praying for my mom. I've seen the Lord doing some things in her life too mm -hmm. and it's been a long time but that itself is another testimony that I I believe I will share one day amen amen I got a few more how are we doing we're good we're, we're doing good we are at number seven how did your dad come into Jesus how did you come into Jesus affect you personally? I know you've already shared it both before and now. How did it how did it um affect you personally? You know, and yeah, let's let's deal with that question and then I'll ask you the next one after that. The biggest thing was having coming to know God, it gave me hope. Mm -hmm. And I think for our whole family, my dad, because growing up on the reserve in that cycle um there were many hopeless hopeless times yeah it was knowing god and knowing that there was 
potentially something there to help me, to rescue me when I needed it. And when I came to know that it was real, that gave me even more hope. I think it was the most important thing was learning about God. That that, that was really impactful. Amen. All right, number eight. What are some immediate challenges? You know, a lot of the people talk about the easy part of following Jesus. But come on, we know that the, the, the moment you follow Jesus, this the devil comes in with, with yeah. everything he's got to try to make you change your mind. So yeah. what were some of the immediate challenges you faced following your event of following Jesus? And even more so, what were some challenges your dad faced yeah. after that decision, after that miraculous turnaround in his life? The first mm -hmm. um, challenge I can remember at a young age, being a, te a young teenager, like 13, 14 years old, going to church and, you know, just seeking. I remember there was one time that a person in the church had went up and said a few things that the three of us, me, my sister, and my cousin felt were directed at us. Mm -hmm. And they were. It was talking about young people, and it was a moment where we just felt like crawling under our seats or running out the door, but we knew it would draw attention to us. So it was little things like that that initially hurt us and almost kept us away from the church. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe it did too, is we were hurt by someone in the church. And it's funny, later we all got phone calls at home from this person apologizing for what happened. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we were very young and very hurt by what happened. So it was harder for us to get over. Um, and at the same time, we weren't, we didn't have those relationships with God. Mm. So we were easily turned away Um so that was one challenge, but yeah. still, I knew God was a God who answers prayers. That would, that's what they told me at church. So I relied on that when I needed help, and I felt like I had no one. Mm -hmm. Challenges for my dad. Yeah. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I feel he would probably best answer that one. Mm. But... Initially, I think it was, you know, just relying on his own strength when he tried to overcome those problems in his life. Yeah. And it wasn't until I seen him again actively pursuing God. He went to Bible school. He, I'd see him when I'd go on the visit. Every time I woke up, he was reading the word. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of challenges, I think, are based on our decisions, too. Mm -hmm. what are we choosing yeah. when I was choosing to be in the world that was one of my biggest challenges yeah. because that was really clouding um, clouding things yeah Amen. how did you overcome them you already shared that okay have, have your beliefs changed as a result of your experience definitely I mean you came to Christ. So we're going to skip that yes. one. We're going to go to emotional and psychological impact. Can you describe the range of emotions you experience during and after the event of yeah. accepting Jesus Christ into your life? So before um, growing up, I was a very timid child, a timid girl. Mm -hmm. I was a people pleaser. Come on. I was, because I grew up in that cycle, I never wanted to upset anyone or cause that cycle to change. Um, yeah. Leaving home, I realized I maybe had um, some issues with being triggered by certain things. Uh, I remember living in my first apartment and hearing people fighting next door and immediately got scared. Yeah. Though I was safe in my own space, I, yeah. I was paralyzed by fear for a while. Yeah. So I had little things like that. Um, didn't have my own voice. Mm. 
I was just this timid person who couldn't speak for herself. And as I grew up, as I became a young adult, some of that started to change and develop on its own, but not to the extent in the last two years that I've experienced change that I couldn't do on my own. Mm. A lot of emotional change. Um, and, I be- and I do believe that God is working out a lot of it still. Yeah. That I, I, the way I describe it is I feel like I was this shell of a person who had so many rough edges. And in a sense, God had to break me down from all of those and polish up and sand smooth over those rough edges. Mm-hmm. And I believe he's still doing a lot of that work in my life. But he's helped me to be more confident, to have a voice. Um, speaking at church that one mm-hmm. day, a couple of years ago, I never thought I'd be able to do something like that. Yeah, he's done a lot of things that I just, I know for a fact I couldn't do on my own. That's right. That's, that's how he rolls. Yes. That's the Lord. Yes, he that's the that's the Lord, Amen. That's so that's so inspiring. Um, number eleven. I don't want to ask number eleven. Number eleven is a bad question. I'm not going to ask this. Number twelve. Oh. Number twelve is talking about support from friends and family. Mm-hmm. How did that support affect affect you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you get support from friends? Did you get professional support when you were in the world? In the world. And then afterwards, right? When I was in the world, um, when I left home, I yeah. left home to go to university for social work. Yeah. And I got my degree. Mm. And during that time... I began to learn about human behavior. I began to learn about those cycles and they have a word for it. It's the cycle of abuse. Mm -hmm. So all of these things led me to thinking I needed to go to therapy. I needed to address anxiety, issues with anxiety. I tried therapy a few times, didn't feel any significant impact from that. It was just, you know, someone to vent emotions to vent my feelings to excuse me um and then um yeah it was I sought out help like that <clears throat> my sister was my most important support throughout everything yeah but again when I was in the world there was those were like band-aid fixes it would help That's me for a moment like long term Nothing changed. Nothing helped me. Mm -hmm. I was still experiencing um, a lot of what I battled with emotionally. Mm -hmm. Right until Jesus came into the picture, right? Wow. And then, yeah, when he came in, that's when I felt like things were really changing. And I really was healed and I had really forgiven things like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Praise God. All right. I think number eleven and twelve are. I just combined that. Two. So number thirteen, we're we're almost done. It's it's questions. It's three, 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 right? So mm-hmm. this one is talking about your reflections and insights, mm-hmm. right? Looking back, what do you think were the key lessons you learned from your testimony, from your dad's testimony? The key lesson was having my own relationship with God. That's right. That is what meant the most to me. I've seen it work in my dad, and I see it working in my own life. Mm -hmm. And not to compare myself to others. I was bad for that when I was in the world, and even as a baby Christian, I guess you could say a baby believer, I used to compare myself to others. I used to want to bring myself to a standard that I would set in my mind. And it just, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that's... Number number 14. 
sometimes I want to cough, <laughs> but I don't want to cough in the mic, and then that's why I'm like, uh, I don't know what just happened there. Forgive me. Anyway, number 14. What would you have done differently if you had the chance? I probably would have tried having a relationship with God a lot sooner. Yeah. Um, seeking after him and making that decision early on. Because I sometimes think back on the time I wasted in a sense, you know, yeah. how differently would things have been had I had a real relationship when I was a teenager or as that young adult. Yeah. But you know, with Christ, there's no condemnation, right? Amen. <laughs> I, I know we do think about yeah, these things. I always think about but that. There's so. no condemnation. And when we start, it's mm -hmm. like it's like we never we we were never without him. I don't know how yeah. to say that properly, but yeah, yeah, that's that. Um, what would you advise someone who would or who might find themselves themselves in a similar situation that you were in or that your dad was in? So yeah, what would you advise someone that and, was that's battling with addiction, someone that is in the world partying yeah. and things like that? What would you give them? The I think it's. Um... Look at okay. the camera and tell them. <laughs> yeah. The big reason I wanted to share mm -hmm. my testimony is mm -hmm. because I know there are a lot of people going through similar battles. And it's important to know that, you know, God is a God of hope and He is a God who can do the impossible. Mm. I grew up thinking that things would never change. I grew up feeling like I was in an impossible situation. And he showed me that he doesn't need my help to do these things. He can do it and he'll do the impossible. Mm -hmm. So if you are currently battling with these issues, I would recommend doing what I did for many years was talking to God and talking to him like he's a friend. Ask, don't be afraid to ask him anything in prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and also find someone that you can talk to, a fellow believer who can encourage you, pray for you. And um, I think, yeah. That's... Amen. 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 That's that was beautiful. That was amazing. Uh, there we go. We are we're in the closing. <laughs> we're in the closing section. We have now broader in, in, in implication and then closing. How do you think your testimony, your dad's testimony, will impact others when they hear it? I believe that it's a testimony of hope, and you know that the Lord can and will touch people's lives through hearing yeah. hearing it and I'm not just saying that because it's my testimony but because I know who God is and I know what he's capable of and I know that he's given me hope and he's answered prayers mm -hmm. he's answered a lot of my prayers so I'm I'm really blessed amen amen number 17 what changes do you hope to see as a result of following Jesus? Not just in your life, in your life, your family's life, in the church, in the city, in the nation, in the world. What changes yeah. do I hope to see? Yeah, in like a few sentences, what yeah. changes do you hope to see? I hope to see my family impacted by God, my reserve, and as well, Saskatchewan and Canada as a whole. Mm -hmm. I do believe that, um, yeah, God has big plans for his people in Canada. That's right. And, you know, the First Nations people often feel forgotten, mm -hmm. but I do believe that they are a big part of it also. That's right. And that God is going to move in their, in these communities and show them who he truly is, That's you right. know, because of our history, he was 
grossly misre misrepresented by people in the past. Mm -hmm. So he's going to show them who he truly is, that he is a good God. Amen. 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 I love it. Amen. The people say amen in the comments. Don't forget to say amen in the comments. Here we go. Number 18. We've got three more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says here. Oh, we're going to skip number 18. Number 19. I don't like number 18. <laughs> number 19. Is there anything you would like to share that we haven't covered today? I think that covered a lot of it, but... Um, I know there are a lot of young people, like I said, mm -hmm. who were in my situation who probably need to hear that testimony. Mm -hmm. Because if there was one thing I remember being a teenager in church, is I always felt alone in my situation. Mm -hmm. I always felt no one understood because... When I'd go to church, there were so many people going up and testifying and sharing how they're interceding for their family. And it was always their children. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm praying for my children, praying for my children. And so I felt very alone in that, that me and my sister. Um, that no one there really understood what we were going through. So, mm -hmm. you know, I hope that other young people will encounter God and know that. There's so question 20. Mm -hmm. How can people support anyone who went through what you went through, anyone who went through what your dad went through? I feel like the biggest thing is just showing the love of God mm -hmm. and being kind to other people mm -hmm. because you never know what's going on beneath the surface. Yeah. Because we present we sometimes present ourselves one way to the world. Mm -hmm. when you know there's things going on or you encounter someone who's angry seems bitter you don't know what their story is and you know god just wants us to show his love to other people so i think that's the biggest way to impact others and sharing that love you know that spreads hope god's hope yeah amen yeah, yeah. amen well right now artists we're gonna pray Mm -hmm. For people who are going through addictions, uh, um, whatever, whatever it is, any addiction, any form of struggle, whether it's drugs, whether it's lust, whether it's um, alcoholism, whatever it is, uh, we're going to pray that they they are free from that. But before everyone will pray, I want to invite everybody to share, like, subscribe, all this, all these um, videos, share them, subscribe to the channel, right? If you need prayer, come to church. We're at 136 Avenue f south there's 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 meetings every wednesday at 7 30 p.m there's meetings every sunday at 10 30 a.m and 6 p.m uh just come and 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 there's gonna be a ministry here pastor terry brent pastor shelley uh pastor sean pastor justin anyone any of the ministers the prayer warriors are here or well, there's gonna be someone to pray for you myself included so far so yeah, we're going to pray for, for you right now. If you need prayer, just comment down there in the comment section. And uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to see it and we're going to pray for you. Amen. There's also prayer almost every day. So artists, we're going to pray for addiction to bring up. But before we pray for that, I just want to pray. If I want to pray with those who have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. Because if you pray and you're not saved, it doesn't really work. It doesn't work. The Bible says sure. that there is no other name by which man can be saved but by the name of jesus christ of nazareth if that's you you're tired of addiction i want you to pray with me right now say lord jesus i repent of my sins father in jesus name i turn to you take control of my life jesus christ i confess you as my lord i believe that God raised you from the dead. Yeah, say this after me. That I confess you as Lord. I say bye-bye to the devil. Become my Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. Become my Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Friends, if you pray that prayer, I believe that you have been born again. I pray for you to be filled. Let's stretch your hands towards them. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Artists, would you pray for anyone struggling with addictions? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, again for this opportunity okay. to reach people and to share your love. And, Lord, we just declare freedom over the people who are battling these addictions and listening to these words. Lord, we pray that you would encounter them. Yeah. Lord, that they would receive the deliverance and salvation that they need. Yeah. We ask, no, Lord, we declare that you are raising a standard for them right now against the enemy. Mm -hmm. And we just come against every plan of the enemy right now that is keeping them bound in this addiction. And Lord, we declare freedom over their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that's it. We'll see you on the next one. God bless you guys. God bless you.